It's the show where you ask questions and we provide answers occasionally. No, that's... Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Hi, I'm Jonathan. Jonathan Knowles here for Ask an Expert. It's the show where we take your questions from the Twitterverse about the topics we cover at SU. Ah, look at this. You are just, just the most adorable little thing. Okay. Away with you. Our first question from BB Blanco Billions. Woke up and realized, why aren't people living underwater? I'm making that my goal in life before I die, to colonize the underneath of the seven seas. Okay, I think that's awesome. Uh, people have been living underwater, but before we go, let's just say, I know what you mean here, but you know, we say seven seas. In fact, we should start thinking about the ocean as the oceans, right? There's not a bunch of different oceans. It is one incredibly complex system that works together. And I bring that up because I think that it's one of the problems we have is we think, okay, well, let's focus on saving the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean or the Mediterranean Ocean. But we need to start thinking of it as a whole system and getting others to as well. So why would we want to have people living under the ocean in a research lab? Well, first of all, uh, imagine being up close and personal to all the things under the sea. There's something about being human that compels us to go and explore and discover. And while it is wonderful that we can do a lot of that with remote operated vehicles, that is, there is no replacement for us actually going when we can and being there and experiencing it and seeing with our own eyes new amazing life forms. Let's face it, we cannot learn enough about our ocean. Oh, how wonderful. It is literally responsible for life on this planet. Oh, yes. Now, what about living under the sea? Why are people living under the sea? People should be living under the sea. The ocean is a hard, difficult place to colonize is the short answer there. Think about the pressure under the water, right? When you go down deep in the water, the pressure is crazy intense and it's hard for us to build things down there and live down there. There's no oxygen that we can breathe down there, so we'd have to make our own oxygen. We'd have to find ways to grow our food, of course. These are all things I think that not only can we do, I think we will do. But before we worry too much about living under the ocean, we have a whole lot of challenges today that we really need to address uh, with the ocean. We've sort of treated the ocean both as our supermarket and as our toilet for about 10,000 years now. And we're finally realizing that that just doesn't work. So, great, let's do it. I love that that's gonna be your life's goal. In the short term, let's fix the things that we can fix today so that when we move into our nice new home, it's a place we're proud to live in. Oh, you're back. Come on, come on, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, you know what, you're just, I'm going to keep you. There we go. Thank you. Okay, now you just stay right there. Great. I love this guy. Our next question is from Cullum Brown. Coral reefs, kelp forest, and mangrove ecosystems, all in peril from climate change. Has the planet already passed the tipping point? Oof. I don't think so. I don't believe so. It's not too late. You see, the Earth has been four and a half billion years in development. Humans were optional, let's face it. We could disappear and the Earth would figure it out. But hey, we have a great place to live here. Why not keep it nice? You know, my friend Sylvia Earle, she said that now we know. People in the past, they couldn't know. They didn't know. But now, now they can know. And it is great because it is moving some people to action. So there are many organizations now that are focused on trying to clean up the plastics in the ocean. People that are working on trying to deal with over uh, fishing in the ocean. People that are really working hard to deal with the climate change problem that we face here today. And that's good news. And more and more people, I believe, are gonna come on board to do just that. Here's the deal. Another quote from Sylvia. 
Humans are the only creatures with the ability to dive deep in the sea, fly high in the sky, and reflect on the past, assess the present, and imagine the future. That means we have a great responsibility. That is a great responsibility indeed. You see, we know what we have to do. It's not too late to do it. Oh, hi. Uh, thanks for watching Ask an Expert. I'm Jonathan Knowles. Check back next week for a new episode. Here's another video from SU, and don't forget to click here to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter, at Jonathan Knowles.